right now Janet Kuypers and uh, we're gonna go live are you ready Janet I think I am you think you are I think okay, I am. well I think that mic is on now so I everybody can I'm hear you hello um, you want to be about six inches from it and um, That'll be great. I hope I'm good with the microphones oh, now. You look awesome. I've got microphones awesome. everywhere. This Fabulous. is a crazy new place. I haven't been here for a while. Yeah, it's, it's so much from. nicer than, yeah. than the way it was before. Well, and it's getting better every day. <laughs> like we all are, right? We're all getting better. Better and better. <laughs> every day in every way. So, um, so tell me what's going on in your life. What are you doing with poetry and the world. Uh, I was gonna say people probably here don't know enough, if they don't know enough about me, um, I've been running a poetry open mic that was take over from David Rubin that started in December 96 that uh, um, Charlie Newman ran for a bunch of years and I took it over and it's been at the, uh, it's the Cafe Gallery and it has been at Gallery Cabaret for years <laughs> and I've been doing publishing things and I've been doing all sorts of poetry things but I've just found out that because of job changes that we are going to be moving to Austin, Texas. So it makes me very sad that this will be the last time I'll be able to see this wonderful, wonderful place. Oh, it won't be the last time. I'll have to time. come by for visiting. And you, yes. know what, you know what's really funny? The last time I was here, I was reading a bunch of haiku poems. Yes. And I have video copies of them all, but since then I've started getting, I've got a Vine account. Yes. And so periodically I'm like, I've got a bunch of six second haiku readings. I'm going to put up a Vine post. And so from last September 14, 2014, I've got video that I'm still putting up. So if there's nice. a so so there might be a chance if I'm going to talk about the more recent book where I happen to talk about being in India. Yes, uh, India. I wrote a few uh, haikus there as well, which nice. was which was an exasperating and strange and fascinating experience. Yeah, I'd love to hear more about which India. Which is probably the thing that you probably want to hear about the most. Um, sure. I uh, I think I've I've been a vegetarian for over twenty years now, and. When I decided to become one, I happened to be staying at a hotel while driving, driving back after going to see the ball drop in New York. Um, I happened to be staying at the Poconos, and when my 10 year anniversary is coming up, I told my husband about this, and he suggested we go back and get a nice hotel in the Poconos, which is very, very oh, cute, yeah. you know, for, you know, 10 years ago. And so I jokingly said, well, what are you gonna do for 20 years? What are you gonna do? What are you? And he, uh, because of his work, has, been taking a lot of trips to go starting up another plant, pharmaceutical plant, in Vishakapatnam, India. And he said, wow. and, and so he's gone, and of course I haven't, but he said, well, it might not be exactly on your anniversary, but would you like to spend your 20 year anniversary by going to India for a couple of weeks? And I'm like, wow, that would be fascinating. Wow, I love yeah. it. And, uh, and, I, and the trip was not, um, it was mostly for his work, so we first um, stopped, and I made a point to write uh, journal things and take lots of photos and talk about my experience there, and I was taking it from a vegetarian perspective because it was fascinating to go and you'd go to lines or whatever, and they might have one little table of things that would be for meat, but otherwise, whatever you picked, and there were a lot of very similar things, but it was cool that I didn't have to go thinking, is this safe? Do I have to be asking him? Right, <laughs> Which is right, really, right, really sure. nice, like actually. Right. But um, when we were flying in, we made this point to stop in Delhi first. And uh, um, my husband had to leave early to be able to get for work, so I had stayed with a coworker for an extra day, and we went to the Taj Mahal. Nice. And, and, which I've got things about that in here as oh, well. Oh, and, and, and Which is the thing I like about this book that I just released called Bon Voyage, which also has been solicited in Hindi with it. And because <laughs> guess what? You go to places, hey, I'm going to be at your airport. I might look at your thing that says Bon Voyage. Well, guess what? Things are in Hindi as well. Or when we were there, um, Telugu, Telugu, Telugu. Um, the local language, because there are, I don't know how many languages in India. And if you go to college, you will probably be learning Hindi as well, and you will learn um, English. But otherwise, you know very small dialects, and this is something that I discovered while I was there, that you would go there and people have a very different idea of how to be able to deal with foreigners, or in particular, how to deal with women. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, that did not occur to me. Um, when I was going to be going there, um, understanding a caste system versus our classes and the concepts of 
well, there will be poor and people will be sleeping underneath um, stations and, and it's much Whoa, more, much seriously? more common, much more common. And people who have money and are in that really rich elite mm -hmm. are like you and I financially. Oh it's goodness. not, it's not like you hear about the famous people in this country. It's mm -hmm. not like that at all. Um, one of the times, <laughs> and, and this is one of the reasons why I decided when I was coming here today to make a point to wear the black pearls and earrings that I got from the Vishakhapatnam airport. Nice. Oh, by the way, Vizag is what most people will call it. <laughs> I'm getting used to being able to say the name of the town. Um, and, uh, and I've got my, my uh, India shirt on. And I made a point to put longer pants on because women at all times, I don't care how hot it is out there, will have your they have their shoulders covered and they will have long pants on. Which is why a lot of times you see women that are wearing leggings underneath a skirt or whatnot so that they don't show off their legs. One of the times when my husband went early, I said, your place in Vizag is right off the Bay of Bengal. And he said, yep. And I said, oh my gosh, you've got to go and dip your feet into it. You're right there. You just, no, yeah. you do it. Just go do it. And he was like, all right, all right, fine, I'll do it. And I'm like, hey. Um, I find out after the fact that because of the way they treat sewage and the like, things aren't very clean and there's probably oh, no. a lot of sewage and it's not a very clean thing to be there. But then again, people in India would be playing in that water and going there. And one time, because I couldn't as a woman just be walking around off on my uh, own alone that uh -huh. much, mm -hmm. I, I finally said, well, Janet, just break down and you made him do it. Go out there, dip your feet in the water. And so I'm wearing long pants, so I make a point to bring um, a towel. And I'll be, wait, I'm going to bring a camera just to prove to him that I did it, which is why you might see on the back cover I've got a shot of my feet, my shadows <laughs> in the water. And, um, and so uh, I went there, and I'm like looking at the water, and I'm looking at the sand, which is surprisingly orange. And it's the it amount is. of iron deposits. I was like, what oh, is really? that? Is that from waste? Yeah. I, I had no idea what it was. And he's like, sure. it's the amount of iron from the mills and things of just being left there in the water, wow. which I found fascinating, which I had to then take some sand back with me as well. But um, I went and I was like, well, I'm going to walk in. I'm just walking by. I didn't see that the tide had gone out. The tide then, and I had my pants rolled up to my knees. Tide came in splashing up over my knees. I'm like, oh, all right, my pants are oh, wet now. Oops. So and so, so I'm like, all right, what's done is done. I took photos. Time to go in. I'm drawing off my legs and I see um, an Indian I'm a guessing man with his wife and child um, they're walking along on the street I mean, they're walking around everywhere but um, these, these stop and the woman and child stop and he, the man comes walking over and he just stops three feet away from me and just stops and looks at me and smiles okay and I know he doesn't know English but I, I'm just like Drying off my feet. I didn't know what to say. I'm like, <laughs> I started, I'm like, what do I do? And I'm like, just trying to, you know, then walk and get out. And guess what? You're going to be taller than everyone because I'm a tall woman, six feet tall. Oh, so, so I'm like, yeah. I'm just going to take off at my normal pace. And I will, you know, I don't think they're going to follow me, but I'm just, just get going because you don't, you don't have the um, tools to be able to interact. And this might be something entirely normal. Um, for them to, oh, this is something interesting to observe. I'm just going to come over and watch. And that's normal for them, but it's not for us stupid Americans exactly. kind of thing. So it's exactly. <laughs> exactly. very, very strange. So. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, it was interesting to be able to go. And I, and I felt bad that uh, my husband couldn't go to the Taj Mahal, which it was surprising. And the other things you'd learn about when you're going there is, well, because we're close to the water, there was a lot of fog sometimes, just from driving or whatever. But because of the exhausts of the vehicles, um, they have cars. They're very, very tiny, but they have them, and they have many. And they have many, many motorcycles, but I would call them uh, glorified scooters. They don't have big cars, they're big motorcycles cars. or anything like that. And if, I la if there are four lanes to a road, that means you probably have about six wide of people just wedging in and just going anywhere to go. The idea of having lane markers or stop signs seems like mm, a vague suggestion and that's about all. They honk their horns like mad and they're ducking everywhere. And, and, and people are that saying that's- you so nervous. Um, that's, what, that's what people thought. And I'm like, well, I'm not driving. 
these people who are driving know what they're doing. So to me, it just started to become like a symphony of horn honks because I had confidence that the people driving me knew what they were doing. I think other people were like, that's so frightening. But I'm like, yes. well, at the same time, I was just like, ah, they know what they're doing. And, right. and it, it wasn't like, um, it, it, it didn't seem to me like the horns were as loud as like loud American, like semi, I mean, there's a bunch of little cars, beep, 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 and some of them would honk to let you know, by the way, I'm cutting in, beep, 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 beep. And so there were all these little horns going off all over the place. And since I'm oh, not I driving, see. I was like, it just became like this shower of horn honks. And I, since yeah. I didn't have to pay attention to it, but it was just really fascinating. Sure. That completely different mindset about how yes, to drive. Yes, yes, yes. I think uh, recently my uh, husband from another trip, because he has to keep going back there, um, he put up a photo and he's like, people who've been to Indu will, Indu will appreciate uh, we'll, and we'll find the humor in this. And he took a shot from above of people parked and their little cars perfectly in the center of these big parking spaces. Like they're not all crammed together like with the way they would drive. And I just thought that was the funniest thing because they're, you know, well, we're going to park like we're supposed to, but get out of my way when I get on the road. <laughs> yes, um, yes. I've, I've been around in a number of places and I wanted to have stop signs in other languages and I've had ones let's say pare and alto and, and I have something in Chinese and I said I, I only saw at an airport did I see a stop sign in Hindi and I couldn't get a photo of it and I'm like oh I wish I had a photo in Hindi yes. but, uh, my, but my husband at one point he's like well how about this for a stop sign because this makes sense if you know the roads it would be a stop sign and somebody had pasted over a white piece of paper that said 40 miles per hour <laughs> Which is like, we're not going to listen to stop signs. Here's a suggested speed you should be going. <laughs> <laughs> because it, I mean, it was just, that was a really funny thing about it. And the create, you think it's a, it's a whole different mentality. And just because we have a driver's license here, that doesn't mean that you'd be able to have a driver's license in India. You'd have to go through a whole different set of testing and schooling oh. and everything. It's, it, yeah, which is very strange. But very funny. It is. So. So anyway, so yeah, I, I wrote a few pieces. I know in my journals, I was like, by the way, I'm having this and this, because it was just so exciting to be yes, have, have it is. Cho sure, I can have choices. Imagine. And after a while, I was like, well, I'm not going to tell you any longer about <laughs> what I ate. But, um, and that was one thing, another thing, because we were right along the shoreline, um, there were statues of leaders, um, emperors and the, and the thing, and the like, I should say, and uh, they would have it in Hindi and then they'd have it in English and they might say, um, well, uh, let me look, I've got a few of them, renowned Telugu emperor, renowned classical poet, or hear the guy's name, commander of modern Telugu poetry, revolutionary poetry is his forte. Oh. Like a third of the names were like people that were like emperors and poets. <laughs> Poet. Incredible. I mean, it's incredible. Like, I have, this we is don't like, see poets anymore. No, really. so like, oh, yeah, People are so dismissed. <laughs> exactly. I was so. having quite a conversation with um, Peter's nephew over. You know, Peter lost his uncle who owned a chain of supermarkets. Mm -hmm. They come from a whole different subset of culture than what we do. Yeah. You know, they're they're closer to the one percent than we are. <laughs> And so this nephew uh, is telling me about how he uh, he has uh, how he's going for a hedge fund mm -hmm. career, a career in hedge funds. Yeah. And I'm like, and oh, true. shrubs and bushes and <laughs> hedge funds. And you know, I'm playing with words, and I'm a poet, and of course I'm going to do that. And he and his friend are looking at me utterly aghast, like, how can she possibly be so stupid? And, and <laughs> <laughs> you probably knew what he was talking about, but that you said that exactly, it was very funny. Exactly. <laughs> I like it. So, so for, you know, to, for a poet to be conceived of, you know, rather than you know the horror, <laughs> somebody who but, plays with words. Yeah, and I was like, one of the statues of the people. Um, I don't know if I've got him um, in in amongst this, and this is why I bothered to release this book that it would not only have my journal entries, but it would also have lots and lots of photos of things and I uh, one of the photos of these people that have signs that say freedom fighter poet or you know they're an emperor of this and this one of these poet um, was a man and he wasn't he wasn't in full garb he was just wearing like a um, a, a, a button-down shirt with the sleeves rolled up in pants and he was holding a clipboard and I'm like that's awesome versus having all of these people in like get up for, as being an emperor or whatnot <laughs> <laughs> they were just so 